Last monsoon in Andhra Pradesh, a group of farmers watched something they'd never seen before, a drone buzzing low over their paddy fields. They wondered what it was for. Turned out, it was spraying fertilizer, scanning the crop, spotting pests and saving hours of manual labor. And that's the kind of quiet revolution happening in Indian agriculture right now. Welcome to AgriFocus July, where today we explore the intersection of technology and policy in Indian farming. Because here's the thing, India's farmers have the potential to feed not just the country but the world. But to do that, they need more than just soil and seeds. They need support, information, innovation and smart policy. So let's break this down, one question at a time. Number 1. What's the buzz around digital agricultural platform and what exactly is digital agriculture? So at its core, it's about using technology to make farming smarter. Apps that tell farmers when to sow, portals that connect them directly with buyers, dashboards that help governments track crop patterns in real time. Platforms like Kisan Suvidha, Enam and AgriStack are trying to bridge this gap. But let's be honest, not every farmer has fast internet or knows how to use complex apps. That's why accessibility matters as much as innovation. Number 2. How are drones and AI changing the field? Once upon a time, a farmer would walk through his field to check for pests. Today, a drone can scan the entire area in minutes and send detailed images. AI tools can then analyze those images and pinpoint exactly where the issue is. This saves time, money and resources. Drones are also being used for spraying fertilizers and pesticides with precision and less wastage. Sounds futuristic? Maybe. But in states like Punjab and Andhra Pradesh, that's already in motion. But the real challenge now is making these tools affordable and available to small farmers and not just big agribusinesses. Third, who is helping the farmer understand all this tech? Let's pause and ask. Even if we have great tools, who is teaching farmers how to use them? That's where agricultural extension services come in. These are government or university-backed experts who travel village to village, teaching farmers new techniques, helping them adopt modern methods and answering their day-to-day -day questions. Think of them as bridge between labs and land. Strengthening these services is crucial because no app or drone can replace human guidance in the local language with local context. Fourth, who's driving innovation in agriculture? A growing group of agri-startups is bringing fresh energy into farming. Some are building soil testing kits you can use with your phone. Others are creating platforms that connect farmers to buyers skipping middlemen. Then, there are startups using AI to predict yields or blockchain to track produce from farm to fork. Places like Agri-Innovation Hub and RKVY Raftar are helping scale these ideas. The good news? Young entrepreneurs are finally seeing farming as a space of innovation and not just tradition. Fifth, how do we estimate crop production across a whole country? One word, remote sensing. Satellites can now track crop health, acreage and yield estimates from above. This helps policy makers plan procurement, manage food stocks and even detect drought early. In short, we are using space tech to protect ground level food security. Sixth, what's the government actually spending on agriculture? Let's talk about policy and budgets. In this year's union budget, agriculture saw increased allocations for rural credit, irrigation and digital agri-infrastructure. Initiatives like the Digital Public Infrastructure for Agriculture are expected to create open-source tech platforms, kind of like UPI but for farming. More funds are being directed towards startups, women farmers and natural farming. But the big question is, will this money translate into real impact at the farm gates? Seventh. Why are APMC reforms such a big deal? First of all, APMC stands for Agricultural Produce Market Committee. These are government-regulated markets where farmers sell their produce. The problem? Middlemen dominate, prices fluctuate and farmers often don't get fair value. Recent APMC reforms tried to let farmers sell outside these mandis, directly to buyers, processors or exporters. It sparked massive protests and had to be rolled back. The issue is tricky. Reform is needed, but it has to be inclusive and respectful of farmers' concerns. Lastly, can India become a global agri-export hub? Yes, but the long answer is not without fixing the basics. We have the production. What we lack is proper storage, quality control and global certification. That's where the agri-export policy comes in, aiming to double farmer income by promoting high-value crops, building cold chains and supporting organic exports. If done right, India can go from Annadata to Vishwadata, feeding not just itself but the world. So at last, here's the big picture. Tech is not a silver bullet and policy alone won't transform agriculture. But when the two work together, when innovation meets intention, that's when real change happens. 
So the next time you hear smart farming, don't think of robots and satellites only. Think of a farmer holding a phone in one hand and hope in another because that's the future of Indian agriculture.